You think I should do one of these on my channel today? Or? No, no, you shouldn't. Hello, you know, Gun Nation. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Everybody. Hello, hey, everybody. CWB's got some thunderstorms going on right now. Yeah, we do too. So better than last rain. night. I'm supposed to get some rain tonight. Yeah, you were having like tornadoes and hail and all kinds of crap coming your way last night, or weren't you? No, we didn't get shit last night. No. Oh, you're talking about KS? KS. No, we don't get tornadoes here. Are you sure? What happened to Dorothy? All right, we got Craig. We got CWB. Hey, we got 1776 and KS Gun Guy. <laughs> Sean. What's real, up, Sean? The real stars of the show. Ray Cole. Mr. Up, Ray Cole. Sean, Gerald, what's up? CWB. Oh, Gerald. Yeah, there, Mr. Craig. Gerald. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, we, I have never seen a tornado. A tornado has never come within, I don't know, 10, 15 miles of me in, in the time that I've been here in Kansas City. And, and I've been here, uh, well, 40 years, a little over 40 years. And I spent a few years in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. We got more tornado activity in Birmingham than, we, than I ever have here. Uh, the tornadoes tend to go around big cities. Yeah. Uh, the atmosphere is just not very good for tornadoes. It can happen, but it's pretty rare. Hell, I was, I've been in Oklahoma in two of them. I mean, literally right there in two of them. And um, it went right over where I was. Uh, we had to get in the storm. They had a storm cellar built into this place. And then um, when I was like 12, um, we had a really bad one. So, but yeah, Oklahoma gets hit all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty scary there, for sure. Yeah. Hell, I've been in two earthquakes in Oklahoma. Wow. Yeah, that's, you know, because all the fracking and stuff, that's what they say it's caused from. Right. But um, we got KB32. Woo. Oh, hell, Ray is in Overland? Ray, when did you, are you in Overland Park now? Are you my neighbor? I was going to say, hell, that's close. Hey, there's that's, Robin. Yeah, that's super close. Big Daddy G. What's up, Robin? Big Daddy. Hi, Robin, Big Daddy G. And Sean. Uh, P07, you guys could probably answer this better than I could for from Sean. Uh, for the single, how, many, how long did it take for the single action trigger on the P07 to smooth out? It doesn't. <laughs> well, mine, mine's still smoothing out. and I've got probably 500 rounds through mine. Yeah, I don't. I don't really foresee it happening, man. That's the only I, thing I don't like about that Omega trigger is that I feel that more in, in the Omega than in the regular trigger. Yeah, well, the Omega is definitely lighter, but I think I, you know, from when I first bought it till now, I think it's gotten smoother, mm. but it's not like gliding on rails or anything. But I think it's a hell of a lot better. Yeah, there's just a slight, like, uh, almost like a little pre. Pre pull, yeah. like a two stage trigger on the single action almost. It's weird. Yeah, right when you get to the break, it kind of has that little, a little hit. extra, a little extra good. Yeah. So, all right, gentlemen, did y'all have a uh, great Independence Day? Sure did. And I think, man, I think those um, Let Freedom Ring videos were awesome. Yeah, I think I'm the only one who got a thumbs down on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what did you do? I, I, my sound was all screwed up. I was trying to get the gunshot sound in the background, and when I uploaded it, it didn't do it. So I was like, okay, well, good enough. Yeah, but still, didn't deserve a thumbs down. Yeah, I know. But it is what it is. Par Paradox is in the house, too, and Brian. What's up, fellas? So, uh, yeah, no, last night was a lot of fun. Um, got to spend the evening looking over downtown Kansas City, and, and – uh, it got pretty smoggy, so we didn't think we were going to see anything. But I got to tell you, in, in Missouri, fireworks are legal, and you can tell. Uh, there were fireworks all over the city. I mean, it really, it really, truly was a breathtaking light show. Uh, when you looked off to the south, it was all quiet. <laughs> Kansas is a is a, uh, a not a quiet state, but at least uh, my part of Kansas is uh, it's illegal. So uh, pretty fun though. It was a good time. Yeah, we had uh, we had some fireworks last night. Um, uh, Rodima is saying, "Did I make it in time for the CZ Walther forum talk?" <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. You know, we're not going to talk. We're not going to talk about 
that's not what it's all about. And I really love my P10 guys. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all high points tonight. Uh, Brian has a question. Does anyone know if the MP shield trigger gets better with time or will I need to upgrade? You need to upgrade. Upgrade it. Yeah. I mean, mine, I've got tons of rounds through mine, and mine's not bad. It's really not. I mean, it's definitely, you know, I don't know how many rounds you have through yours, Brian, but it definitely gets better just because you're putting wear on it. Uh, but it's never going to get like an apex or, you know, like a really great trigger. But I think it's I think it's perfectly fine for a self-defense carry pistol. You know, I mean, I can still shoot nice groups with mine uh, just the way it is. And mine's all factory. So I haven't done anything with that one. Um, yeah, I, I never I never changed out the triggers in my shields at all. I, I don't see the point of it. Well, yeah, I, I don't. I mean, you know, I did on the 9C, and I, I mean, it really was great. It's really a great trigger. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't know. It's not. I mean, I've got some other guns with really nice triggers. They got, uh, better, they got better over the years. Um, so the very first ones uh, were terrible, uh, but they continually got better. Now, if you pick up a, uh, uh, what is it, the performance center, that's going to be significantly better. But uh, unless you change out at least the safety plunger uh, with like an apex safety plunger, you're, it's just going to be kind of gross. Now, well, and you know this, the Shield 45 trigger is a hell of a lot better. Oh, it's awesome. You know, the, the, uh, the newer one, it's, it's like night and day. Did you, guys, um, did you guys see that Glock uh, release that 19C with the uh, ported uh, slide? Yeah, it's been out for a little while. So like five years, six years. Yeah, like that. I meant they, they have the newer. Have you seen the newer one with the battle worn finish and all that other stuff? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, there's one that's coming from Glock and it's a battle worn finish, and they're doing it in the compensated version. It's kind of like an antique battle worn gray. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah. Now is this is this stock? <laughs> well, yeah, it comes from Glock. Oh, really? But, uh, cool. Yeah. But they, I even asked the guy, I'm like, that's not a custom one. And he goes, no, it comes from Glock this way. And I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. Nice. It does look nice. Um, Ray has a question. Who has a 22 planker and which one? 1022. No, a 22. I think I'm the only one that has a 22, right? I have a 22. Yeah, are, you what are you talking about a like a 22 long rifle? He's probably just meaning a 22 plinker pistol. I'm assuming Ray, you can you can you can uh, say something if that's different. Um, but I've got a couple of uh, 22s. I've got now I do have that P09 conversion that turns it into a 22, and I really do like it. Uh, but probably my favorite 22 is my M&P Compact 22. Great shooter. Um, it was a lot better than my Ruger. I did have issues with my Ruger. And then I also had the M&P full-size one um, that was made by Walther. And it was very finicky on ammo. So, I, uh, yeah, he's talking about a pistol. Um, but the M&P Compact is a great pistol. You can get them for really great prices now. And uh, very, very, you know, it's, I haven't had any issues with it. You're going to get a bad 22 round here and there. We know about Rimfire, but it shoots great. Yeah, I've had. Uh, an M &P, uh, 20, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I've had an M&P 22 and a and a Ruger SR 22, and both of those were fantastic. Uh, they were great builds. Of course, they're small, so they're not terrifically accurate, but uh, but they do a good job. Yeah, and even on the 22 compact, I hate the stock sights, but I did find uh, Wilson fire sights, and they make them. And um, I put a set of those on it, and it, they're just kind of like fiber optic. Uh, it's red in the front and green in the back, and they were inexpensive, and they work really well. Uh, and then Robin has a buck mark. Yeah, buck marks are nice. Uh, Twisted Metals of Texas in the house. V Borg's in the house. Rich. Um, Scab. Let's see. Yeah, and then CWB has shot the M&P 22 and says it's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, but, I um, Yeah, and then I know Rich has one, too. He's got the full-size one. I just got the, uh, you know, I really like the compact because it's kind of between the 9C and the shield. You know, it's right there in the middle. Right. The other one's like the full-size, of course. Um, yeah, the Heritage Rough Rider 22. I have a Daisy Red Rider. Hello. <laughs> yeah, no, 
crickets on that joke, man. I know. I know. <laughs> right, come on. Um, oh, uh, uh, Jesus is God says he chooses our live stream over Alex Jones. Oh, man. That's, that's big time. Heck, yeah. I got some vitamins you can buy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. I've got a question. I got a question for everybody out there tonight. Been getting a lot of uh, you know feedback from the holster videos I put out, and uh, been getting a lot of questions from people asking, "Do I carry appendix or do I carry strong side?" Um, so I'm just kind of curious what everybody out there is carrying. I don't carry appendix at all. It's something about muzzling the old ding dong that kind of troubles me. So. Um, like to hear what everybody else that does out there. That means you guys. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you know that I carry, I carry, you know, at the four to four thirty position. That's pretty much my go-to, and I have for a long time. I've I've tried appendix, and I did it for a little while, uh, and I'm not scared to. It just it just feels really weird, especially with a big full size gun. You know, when you sit down, it you know lays on your leg. It just feels weird. Mm. You know, and also, as you know, with the uh, the uh, double action, single action, you know, that hammer can dig into you also. So, you know, especially when you have it, if you're, well, if you're carrying it cocked and locked, you know, you've got a really, you know, got it really poking out there, stabbing into you. Mm. Uh, Ray carries at the four. Big Daddy carries at the four. Brian carries at the four. Um, because, I mean, at the four, yeah, and then Sean carries at the 330 or four. Um, appendix and 430, four o'clock appendix, uh, appendix. So, so it carries at three o'clock. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of across the board, but what I found is that the 430, I can carry any size gun that I want very comfortably. Right. Right. That's just personal. You know, I guess everything's going to vary. Uh, Ben carries appendix. Um, he carries at the six o'clock because he's a, this uh, red and black uh, dog is he carries at the six because he's a lefty, which mm -hmm. makes complete sense. I doubt he's going to be doing some crazy cross drawing. <laughs> so, um, and then you know another thing that's been that's been brought up or that I am uh, kind of experimenting with, or that I'm going to be experimenting with, you know I'm very, I I, I mean I find it in my own shooting that I'm much, much more accurate with fiber optics. I mean, I shoot good with regular, pretty good, but with fiber optics, I mean, they work a lot better for me because of course it's a really small, you can really pinpoint it on there. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to uh, put some fiber optics, man, I've got something in my eye. I'm gonna put some fiber optics on some of my carry guns. Now, of course I always carry a flashlight at night, we all know that, uh, and it kind of goes against my grain, but I'm gonna try it on a carry gun and you know, really put some rounds through it at the range and stuff like that, and just see how comfortable I feel in carrying it, and then kind of go from there. I mean, if I don't feel comfortable, I'm not going to carry it, but I am going to do some experimenting with it. What are y'all's opinion on that? Um, I, I don't know, man. I'm starting to really favor those uh, excess dot, uh, not the big dot necessarily, but also the. Yeah. Uh, Right. I really, I really like those those sights. I really yeah. like them, and I like them too. I mean, I've got them on a pistol, and and I like them. Man, what the hell? And you know what I like about it is if you guys, you know, do like dry training where you're pulling from your holster and just pointing at a target on the wall or something. One of the things I'm noticing is, and this I've said this before, I'm right-handed shooter with left eye dominance. So you know, I actually have to come up and kind of cross a little bit over. Now I know people have said you should train with both eyes open. I actually do. I'm actually getting a little bit better with that, but. I still have a little bit of an issue, but with the dots, the whether it's an excess big dot or even the standard dot I have on my PPS, as soon as I bring it right up, I mean, it's on target. And that's, yeah. that's for me personally, is why I like them. It's not going to yeah. be for everybody, but I like the way they they, uh, they work with my eyes. Yeah, Shawat is asking for the VP9 rebate. Does that include the SK? And if he's asking about the magazine rebate? No. Um, huh? It doesn't, does it? No. Yeah. The, no, the SK is not included. Right, it's just the uh, not the uh, not the VP nine SK, but um, the uh, what is it? The three the the double action single action one. What is the one that you have KS? Well, that's a that's P thirty. I mean P thirty. The P P thirty is included, but yeah, not the yeah not the uh, SK. 
the V3 is the uh, double action, single action. The V1 is the uh, the LEM with the double action only. Uh, there are a bunch of other ones, but uh, yeah. uh, those, those are the only two I've experienced with. Yeah, if y'all don't know about the rebate on VP9 right now, if you buy a VP9 full size or the SK30, or excuse me, yeah, the SK30, uh, you get four free mags from H and K. <laughs> Smoking deal. Hey, twisted. You said you needed a, a holster for your gun. What gun are you talking about? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I was gonna say twisted. Hell, we might have it. No. Oh, yeah. no. Sorry. <laughs> What's he got? Uh, Smith and Wesson 469 and 1911 variant. Oh yeah. No, I've got my. Uh, I have the 469 also, and I'm, or four, uh, the four, 439, and um, yeah. <laughs> hey, there's Wicked. He's talking about GunGuy.com. All right, Wicked. Thanks, buddy. Oh, uh, Wicked. <laughs> uh, Sean is saying your PO7 yet. Did I miss another question? Um, I don't know. I'm awesome. I don't see anything. And Radama has uh, excess big dots on all of his carry guns. Yeah, just getting back to that quickly. I think the reason why I, I favor them is because instead of having to, you know, put that one, you know, front post in between the, you know, the two, whatever you want to call it, rear sight. I just think it's such an easier gun, especially for self-defense. I mean, if you're if you're going out for like marksman training, obviously I don't necessarily yeah. think it's the best setup. Um, it's not bad, especially with the, the standard dot, but just for self-defense, I don't see why or how you go wrong. I mean, my favorite sights are the Heine straight eights. I mean, those are my favorite sights, but man, they used to be reasonable. Now they're like 150 to 160 bucks, but they're still my favorite sights. And I've got them on a couple of guns, yeah. but man, they're, they're just crazy. Oh, oh night, night sights for a PO7. I still have, I talked to CZ last week. And I still have the night sights for the PO7 and the PO9 on order. Um, and you can get them from Cajun Gunworks for 135 bucks, but CZ sells them for $85. But they had to change in the Czech Republic, they changed night sight companies. And that's why the P10s didn't come with them, the FDEs. So I talked to him and he said, they're still in the process of changing, uh, doesn't know when it's gonna happen. And I've had them on order for over two months now. Two and a half months, maybe, and I'm just like, Shh, I don't know. All right, so er I hope I pronounced that right. He's saying, does the SS guide rod for the PPQ is it worth it? Does it worth money? I think it might be. I actually have um, a couple of those DPM systems uh, recoil springs coming in, and uh, I can't wait to shoot with that because I'm hearing they are just ridiculously uh, awesome in guns. And I actually have one coming in for the PPQ. So as soon as I get that. I'll throw that up on the review and you guys can check it out. They're expensive, but you know, they're, they're actually a really, really cool group of people over there. They're based out of Greece and uh, I've been emailing back and forth with this one dude over there and he's a real cool guy, man. And so they're, they're actually hooking me up. So I'm not gonna, you know, cool. you know I'm not going to tell you that they're not, but uh, I'll give it a, an honest overview and see how it works out. Yeah. Uh, the SS guide rod, you know, and you know this too, but like, here's the stock one for the PPQ that comes in at the polymer one. Mm. And it's really big, you know, and of course it's flat, you know, it's a flat spring, so it should shoot flatter. Yeah. Um, but the other one, the SS is so much smaller uh, and you're getting a steel guide rod with the spring assembly, so you're not putting your spring on it. But uh, this thing's definitely light and I haven't weighed them, so I don't know the weight difference, but I can't, I mean, I'm not saying it shoots like, you know, a 12, like it's 12 pounds on the front end. It's not that damn flat. But I feel that it does make a difference, and even racking it, just racking it with the factory one, and then with the SS, the SS seems smoother to me. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm actually I'm racking it right now, and um, it's a lot smoother and a lot lighter. Yeah, that's what that's exactly what I felt too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that it's worth it. I really do. Uh, just from you know my shooting, and I've even got a rapid shots video where I was just firing them off, and. Um, it, it definitely held a lot better with, you know, rapid fire. And I mean, these weren't real slow. These were really banging them off. And I kept all of them in a fist size group at 10 yards. So I was pretty impressed with that. And uh, Kate, when I that rods is not out of Greece, they're actually out of um, Spring Hill, Florida, and the uh, DPMS systems, or DPM systems is out of Greece. Yeah, correct. 
Um, but I think that it's definitely worth it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I do, you know, I was carrying, um, I was carrying my, my FDE PPQ today and, uh, you know, I, every time I get a chance, I just always rack it and just pull the trigger, you know, as much as I can and just pulling the rack on this compared to the FDE one, uh, I would say this one's a lot smoother, a lot lighter. And I actually have yeah. more rounds through the, the FDE one than the gray one. You know, and even, even this P01, you know, I've got the steel guide rod in there. Now it's just the guide rod. So you're using your factory spring on it. Mm. Um, and, you know, I've heard, and I know you have, too, I've heard some people say, oh, you don't want to run, you know, the steel guide rod in there because it'll damage the gun. Man, I've shot it. A lot of rounds through this. Yeah, so far, I, I don't I have, even know how that. How does that even make sense? Because the guide rod doesn't contact the alloy at exactly, all. So exactly. Exactly. You know, I could I could understand I could understand if the steel was touching the alloy, right. because that could cause intergranular corrosion, but it's not. So I don't see where they're saying that because it's right on the barrel. So I mean, it's you know, so I don't understand why he's saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, but or, yeah, you probably had the same guy comment on yours that commented on mine, but. Um, you know, I haven't had any issues with it. Right. Um, do I think it just really changes the world on the PO1? Mm. I can't tell the difference that much, but of course, it's an alloy frame gun. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you feel less muzzle rise at all, but I think you do shoot flatter because my group was a lot yeah. tighter. Yeah, my, I was going to say my group was better with it on the PO1, um, but you know. So hey, Gerald, how do you like that tungsten guide rod, man? I always hear good things about the tungsten rods. I'm curious about those. So, if you guys want to add something in. <laughs> okay. KS, what, what are you doing, KS? <clears throat> Sitting here. Um, uh, so, stainless steel guide rods. I, I ran one in my Glock 34 when I competed for a while, and I ran into issues with it. Um, I would have failures periodically. It was usually failures to feed. Um, and it was, uh, it was the, uh, factory spring weight on it. I mean, I made sure everything was, was spec'd out properly. Um, and it came with lots of, you know, positive reviews and everything, but I had all sorts of fits with it. And, uh, I decided right then I'm, I'm not going to do, uh, guide routes and springs again. Um, uh, that, that part of my tinkering with uh, guns is done. I'll tinker with other things. But I won't do that anymore. So well, the uh, the cool thing about that DPM system setup is they send you three different springs with the actual guide rod. And yeah. um, he when he emailed me, he was explaining to um, now I'd have to look at the email, so don't quote me on what I'm saying. But I guess there's three different colors to them. So he told me the first color to use to see how it runs, and then obviously he said screw around with the other guide rod or the other springs um, to see how they perform. But he says definitely, you know, use all three of them and see which one performs the best. So I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to see how they shoot. So uh, it's going to be interesting because I picked three guns that shoot relatively well for me. Uh, one was the PPQ, the other is the P10, and then the other one is the Steyr M9. So right. I can't wait yeah. to see how that Steyr runs on that thing. Yeah, that would be cool. There's a lot of people that run that DPMS in, in the CZs, you know, like competition circuit. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who run it, and they say that it works really well. I've just read some little – you know, blogs about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that uh, SoCal um, that's on the chat, he ordered one for his uh, CZ. Yeah. And uh, hey, James Bond, I, I still have my PCR for sale if you want to buy it. <laughs> he wants a P01. I know. PCR is close. Yeah. Yeah, he was, um, I was going to say, he was trying to trade uh, me for my Sphinx nice. or trade a Sphinx or something. I don't know what the hell. And then or he was trying to trade his Sphinx for one. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say, hell, I thought uh, him and KS were going to do a deal. Uh-oh. Didn't, didn't work out. Timing just didn't work out. Gotcha. So, in other words, you sold it before he got his hands on it. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much, yeah. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Early yeah. bird gets the worm, buddy. Right. That's how, that's how we roll. Yeah, okay. and, you know, uh, Rodimo is saying, KS, you're right. I think the same way. You know, he stays with the factory stuff. I uh, rarely ever hear of a factory spring failing. And uh, that's why I'm, you know, doing the testing, um, you know, just to see if it, you know, works and how it works. So. Unless it's a mechanic. Huh? Unless it's a mechanic. Yeah. Um, uh, Curious, what's going on? Coda Boy said a kid had a PO1 at the range today. He offered to trade him his 226 for it. And I'm assuming it didn't work out, but he said he loves the thing. 
Yeah, they're nice. I mean, they're nice. I don't understand is why, you know, believe me, I love the PO1, but I don't understand why there's so much love for that. But everybody always, in my opinion, discounts the PCR, man. A PCR is a great frigging gun. Well, a lot of people like, I think a lot of people like it because, you know, it has the SPO1 look. That's one reason I really like it. There's nothing wrong with the PCR at all. Um, I just, you know, I just really, I like this look personally. And you have a rail if you ever want to put anything on it. So, and it adds, you know, it is heavier in the front end too. Um, just a little bit, not a lot, but, you know, it has, it doesn't have the tapered. I just like the block look in the front end better. Yeah. You know, just personal. Right. Um, if it's so good, why am I selling it? Because I don't need it. That's why. It's preference. Yeah, he likes the PO1 too. Um, Sean says we should start the PO1 mafia. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and then Gerald's agreeing with the. Uh, I guess he's agreeing with the factory guide rod setup, exception of the except the tungsten. He's thinking about selling it too, or going back to the factory in it. Selling what? No, he's thinking about going back to the factory and the tungsten guide rods. Oh, you yeah. know, say what you will about uh, polymer guide rods. They, I mean, and I, somebody was saying it's just a little while ago. I think it was CWB, maybe. Uh, they, they, you rarely ever hear of them failing, and when they do, it's after 10, 15, 20,000 rounds, whatever. Yeah. They, they, they just they run. They're light, obviously, but they run. Or if someone, sure if, someone does like, if someone does like a thousand round test at one time, you know, I've seen them melt them, but, you know, or, you know, they deform and, you know, could cause problems. Well, if uh, it's rapid fire, sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the, I, I think Iraqi veteran did one on a Glock and it melted the guide rod down. It was like a thousand rounds, like just banging them out. You know, he had tons of mags loaded up. I mean, most people are never going to do that. Uh, James Bond is asking, do you think CZ does this on purpose? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. James, James, come to Kansas. They're everywhere. We've got the factory here. Every gun yeah. shop is full of CZs. Come here, hang out for a little while, and grab a CZ. They're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. when I was there, hell, when I was there, you know, you shot my SPO one You bought one right there at the gun store. Yep. You, know, you know what's sad is up here, you know, I, most people don't even know what the hell a CZ is. Uh, it's still, it's crazy. Like, I go to a local gun store, the only thing they carry is the 75 Bs. That's it. Nothing else. Okay. Every once in a while, you see a PO7 in there. You'll never see a P10. Um, you know, the, one of my other locals, he actually just got a P10 because I told him, that you really should get them because you're going to sell it. And I think he had it in the store for like two days and he sold it. So, you know, it's just, I guess it's where you're at, you know? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, I think I told you guys I saw a uh, Urban Gray Shadow Two. That was a pretty sweet looking gun. That was it was a it was a pretty gun. Hard to pass up. Yeah, I've never I I've, I've only seen one PO one in New York State, and that was the one I bought like eight years ago. Wow. And that was it. Crazy. Shit. I dropped the mag. Oh, well. uh, you know, you're right. Big J. <laughs> it, it did get awfully quiet. It's, it was kind of delightful. Um, that's what he did. He disconnected. Can he rejoin his own chat? Did he? Did he, he actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> Either that or we've stunned him. Everybody be quiet. He fell asleep. So James Bond says, Big Bust, you selling your PCR. Um, I didn't know I was called Big Bust. Am I? I mean, is he talking to me? I don't know. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, how much are the PCRs? PCRs, it depends. You know, you can find them for like five forty, sometimes a little bit higher, but they should be under six hundred. They're usually between five and six, but they shouldn't. It's very rare you're going to find them below five hundred unless they're beat to hell, um, and it's very rare you'll find them over six hundred, um, at least for the PCRs. Uh, PO one, yeah, it depends. But uh, the PCR is usually anywhere from five to six. Um, I, I think uh, Craig is probably right. Uh, we probably will have to start a new chat to get him back in since this is his. And uh, James Bond, yeah, I think I am going to try to sell my PCR. I don't know yet. I, I got other guns that I'd like to own more. And, uh, you know, my P01 does everything I want it to. So I don't have any issues for it. 
or any issues with it. But the PCR is a great gun. I mean, I, I put a lot of shit on that gun. You know, the grips, the night sights. I got the Kydex holster. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sell it. I think I want to sell it. I just don't know if I'm going to sell it. Hey, uh, hey, can you guys still hear us and see us? The It looks like it's frozen. Are we frozen? I think so. Let me see. Let me type something out. Dude, he can't host anymore. I know. Grounded. <laughs> yeah, they can see us. All right. And then CWB says he's here in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> he should be able to. He should be able to bounce back in. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Maybe if he goes back to his event. So it says they can't see you. They can only see me. Oh, for God's sakes. Well, no offense, guys. I, I am the show. So, I mean, you know, it's probably better that they can see me, too. <laughs> can you see me? Uh, I see you. I see you give me the bird. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, let's see. No visual on KS. KS screen isn't switching over when he talks. That's weird. Let me see. Hold on. I don't think you can invite me back in. No, you're in, dude. Well, I'm not on the chat anymore. Let's see. You're not on the chat? No. Oh, for God's sake. All right, well. So they're saying they can only hear you. They can't see you. Oh, you can hear me. Let's see. Uh, Coda Boy just said, I'm, too se I'm so sexy. Thank you. There are 44 people watching right now. You've got yeah. to be kidding me. Oh, hey, that, Jay, hello. hey um, tell them to, you're, you're going to have to call me again. Okay. Johnson. What, it went off? Apparently I did, so I'm going to hang up. Call me back. Oh, you're off? Okay. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Says, uh, all right, so here's the deal, everybody. KS is going to be coming back. Big Johnson is going to invite, invite him back in. Can you guys see Big Johnson? Yeah, I mean, back to normal. KS probably should have uh, stayed in because what happened when you dropped, he probably – yeah, because uh, I have I have so much time to get back on, so I was hoping to jump right back in. All right. Okay, so everybody's back in. Sorry, guys. Yay. That, that was intermission. It was just intermission. Yes, just intermission. Dude, Sorry. you got to upgrade your tech specs, pal. No, my crap has all been upgraded, but we're having a bunch of storms, and my lights flickered for a second, so I don't know if something happened or what. Uh. So are you leaving us? Sorry about that. Sorry about that, everyone. Gotta take a poop. <laughs> he's gotta go poopy. Gotta go poopy. <laughs> Either that or he's gotta change his diaper. I don't know, whichever one. Yeah. <laughs> he has to adjust his tic tac box that he carries his gun in. Yeah, and, and whoever said I had a lot of gray, I am I'm getting a lot of damn gray. Gray hair, man. It's on your little ball cushion. Yeah, I don't got nothing. Got nothing up there. Gray and ball. It's awesome. Uh, no echo tonight. I, I actually upgraded my my studio <laughs> with a brand new microphone. Oh yeah, he's all he's all high tech now. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> show him your show him your boom mic. I'll show you my microphone. Look, it's a giant dildo. Yeah. So how, used, how do you like that? that? Hey, listen, it works really well, man. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's actually uh, really really good to use something like that, especially when you're doing the videos. Uh, it just tends to pick up everything. Um, that you need and blanks everything else out Did your camera hook up to it or something? Uh, no, I, I it's a USB mic So it just hooks right into the computer and then you got to oh. play around with the settings in the computer. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool uh, Let's see do, uh, do it right man. What's up, buddy? We've got lame Dave. We have there are a bunch bunch of new people in here that I've seen Damn, do it right on. I know okay, You'll have the same you have the same microphone as do it right. Yeah, he's up in Alaska Yep. Uh, Humble, this is a Blue Yeti microphone. I actually got it on sale at Best Buy. Um, I don't. Am I allowed to say Best Buy? I think well, so. They sponsor you, apparently. Yeah, they, they, this is uh, sponsored by Best Buy. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, Craig says in Plano they're just getting thunder. Yeah, we've had some crazy rain over here. So Rotodyma was thinking about getting the P10C, but decided to get the G19 Halo Edition. That's that's cool. Yeah, yeah. you can't go wrong with either one, man. 
I, I will tell you guys, and I know you don't want to talk about CZs all night, so we won't, but um, the more I carry this damn P10, and after shooting 300 rounds through it, I have to say, I, I really, really love this. Really love it. Yeah, we do have a question from uh, uh, Red and Black Dog. Uh, Lee had defense ammo thoughts. Uh, do they want to sponsor us? Well, no, but yeah. I'm not sure. But I have shot the the ammo. It's it's really nice. But of course, you know, I just shot it into. We shot shot we shot some into a wood one time, but it definitely left some holes. Hmm. But I haven't like carried it or any of that kind of stuff yet. So. The three amigos. We've been called a lot worse. Yeah. What uh, somebody? I think it was the range called us something uh, like uh, pis pistola amigos or something. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Well, it's better than douchebag. Well, yeah. that's true. I mean, that's what he, he followed it up with that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm the texture on that P10 is fine. I don't have any issues with it. If you guys carry a Gen 4 Glock 19, I would say it's very close to that. Very close. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't rub. I mean, you know, I guess if you're, you know, a little soft, it might. But um, I, I like it, man. I have no issues with it. <laughs> I, I think it's comfortable, too. But uh, but it is a little bit more noticeable than, uh, uh, than a Gen 4 Glock, I'd say. But not by much. It's comfortable. And but then, you know, I mean, I carry my FNS. I carry that Sig that I had really grip, you know, uh, aggressive grips, and you know, all my lock grips are super aggressive, except the carry version. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any issue with them because, like we said, if you have a good holster and a good belt, your gun shouldn't sit there and do that while you're moving around. Right. right. And then uh, do it right. Asked uh, if any of us are going to be getting caracals. Um, I don't know, man. I look at them; they're really nice, but uh, I'm I'm springing for the Strike B instead. Um, I don't know exactly how much the Caracal is going to be or Caracal, whatever the hell it is. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty expensive. Hey, yes. Yeah. Scab, or were you going to bring up that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Scab's got a question. How often do you guys clean your carry guns? I, uh, Scab, I clean every gun after every time I shoot it, regardless. First, I, that's part of the fun for me of owning a gun, taking it apart and cleaning it. I want to make sure that it's in tip top shape, no matter which gun, whether it's a carry gun or not. Um, and if I don't shoot my carry gun, uh, for, you know, a month or two or whatever, I still, I get it out and clean it every couple months or better, at least make sure it's lubed, uh, just for the sake of argument. Yeah, I'm about the same. Same thing. Every 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 time I shoot, I come back and I clean my guns thoroughly. Uh, it's just an OCD issue. Yeah, but OCD. Uh, carry guns as I rotate them out, I usually clean them because I'll I'll rotate like every thirty days, maybe a little bit less than that, just to see what I want to carry. Um, but I always like keeping my guns clean. It's just uh, one of those things. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, I usually clean them. Like sometimes if I go out and shoot three hundred rounds or something, sometimes I won't clean it. But uh, for the most part, I, I usually clean them after I shoot, just for the most part. And the only reason I do, and I know Humble, he never cleans his damn guns. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he shoots them like fr freaking two or 3,000 rounds and then says, oh, shit, maybe I'll clean it. He oils the crap out of them. I know that. Puts drops of oil in it. But, um, you know, and, and I know way back when I was talking about cleaning my carry guns, he brought, um, he's like, why do you clean your defensive guns so much? And the only reason I do, and I learned this, I had an old M and P, and it was a really old one. Um, and you know, I shot it, and I said, "Well, hell, I'll take it apart and clean it." And I took it apart, and right where the feed ramp was, there was actually a chunk that came out of the damn gun. I mean, it was actually a chunk out of the barrel. It just split and cracked, and a piece was out of it. And I was like, "What the hell?" And it was right on the bottom of the feed ramp. And I thought it was crap first, and then I could dig my finger down in it. So I sent it back to M and P, and they replaced the barrel. Or sent it back to Smith, they replaced the barrel, and they were like, "Wow!" And what they determined, it wasn't heat. Uh, it wasn't heat treated properly. Um, so they put a new barrel in it, and I never had an issue after that. But just with that one little thing, that just kind of gave me a reason, you know, just to inspect them. It's not necessarily that you're cleaning them and scrubbing them down. I might give them a light cleaning, but definitely like to inspect them. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah, and, and Rich is saying sometimes, you know, he just wipes them off and runs a bore snake through them. And I do that also, you know. It depends just, how many rounds. You know, I, uh, the last time I shot the PO1, I only put 25 rounds through it for the guide rod test. 
and I just came home and wiped it down. And I didn't even run a boar snake through. I said, screw it. There was really nothing in the boar. Um, so whatever, you know, I'm going to shoot that anyway, uh, probably next week. Um, yeah. Craig's asking, I know, I know he had that problem with Walther. Um, yeah, Smith will, you know, Smith has a lifetime warranty on everything. Not after, not aftermarket parts, but every factory part, they will replace it. So they were like, no problem. We got you. And they sent me an RMA thing. They paid for shipping. It was, I mean, I've never, and I've sent, in my lifetime, I've sent two guns back to Smith, a uh, little 380 M&P that had, they replaced the barrel and the mag catch on it. And then after that, I got rid of the damn thing. Hmm. Yeah, Rhoda, I'm all about uh, the grease now too, grizzly grease. I think it's just fantastic stuff. <laughs> Shut up. I, uh, <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, the stuff that cleans up really well. And I think a lot, it's, I think it's similar to frog lube. <laughs> In that once you get it on there, it's much easier to wipe the gun out afterwards. It takes so much less effort, um, and, uh, and it seems to really protect the barrels a little bit better, which is important to me. So uh, I, I love grease. I use duck butter and hen shit, but no, I'm joking. I really do like this uh, breakthrough. You know, the HP Pro, it's the thicker oil, and it really does. I can tell the difference when I shoot with it, and it's easy. It's got a little metal applicator. You can just dab it where you want to. Um, and I like it a lot. Yeah, and, and Humble uses Lucas Extreme, which is similar to this. So, and I've got some Lucas or a little, no, I got the Slip 2000, a little thing of it. Yeah, I don't like to lube them to where the shit's dripping off of it. And on my AR, I actually do the, uh, use the old uh, wheel bearing grease. Uh, shit, an old man got me on that and he's been shooting for 50 years. So. <laughs> NRA says to clean your guns twice a month, shot or not, from Gerald. Um, I the Twice a month might be a little bit excessive. I suppose if you shoot the same gun twice a month, I would. But uh, yeah. it's, it's safe. And depending on the atmosphere in your area, yeah. if you have a real wet area that uh, that's going to you know rust your guns, I don't know that that's necessary. But some people, some people have to do that. In my safes, I've got the dry rods, you know, that you plug in. Yeah, golden rods. And it keeps... Keeps it at the you know that temperature so you don't ever have to worry about it. And I even have some dry bags in there, and I've never had an issue with anything now, in mind. I'm just curious uh, when the NRA said that, were they trying to sell you some lube or something? <laughs> in the in the in the packet that you get, that's about that thick with all yep. the damn advertisements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And there, and I, I was gonna say, yeah, C Max is saying there are so many awesome oils out there. You know. I mean, gosh, and I remember way back in the day, just like what he's saying, there was rim oil and there was freaking uh, hops, yeah. and that was freaking it. You know, now it's everybody's gone crazy with it. Yeah, I, I, I really like the frog loop, man. Not going to lie. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you have to go to the extreme that you did. And also, even the coatings are better on all the guns. And, you know, yeah. I mean, it's they've, they've changed so much. I, the only current gun or gun recently that I've had problems with were the Canix. Um, I saw that the, the barrels wore very quickly. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, it yeah. was really so strange. I mean, you know, like two or 300 rounds, and it had a significant crown, and then the, uh, the top of the barrel that meets the slide, those things were banged up pretty hard. Yeah, mine had serious smiles on my SA, like you said, within like two or 300 rounds. I mean, it was had the big old smiles on it. Now, uh, Humble is saying, does uh, Frog Loop have issues in cold? Some people were saying that. Um, I actually shot a few guns when it was like, I, it must have been, I think, like 15 or 20 degrees outside, and I had no issues with it all. It ran smooth. It did what it was supposed to do. It didn't gum up or anything. But, you, you know, you, it's, a, it's a process when you put it on. You have to strip the gun completely of all of its oils um, because sometimes it'll mix in with the oil and kind of give you a bad result. So it's a pain in the ass to strip it down because you got to do a pretty good strip. Um, and then once you start putting it on, man, it's, it's like, it really works well. That's just my opinion though. I know some people have said they've had issues in the, in the, um, in the cold weather, but I've never had that. You know, yeah, I guess, Sean, go ahead. I was just gonna say, Sean's asking what, what does everyone clean their slides with? I mean, I use CLP and also this breakthrough spray and it works great. I mean, CLP has been around forever. That's what I prefer. And Ballastol, I use Ballastol as well. What do y'all use? I know frog glue, but KS, you, what do you use to clean with? 
Um, you know, I use uh, Wilson Combat uh, Carbon Remover. Uh, that stuff seems to work pretty well, uh, and uh, and that's that's really it. I mean, once you get once you get the the grease on basically everything except by where the firing pin hole is, um, again, everything just kind of wipes down. You don't have to do a lot of extra maintenance. Mm -hmm. See, I think CLP does a pretty good job, even on its own. You know, once it's embedded in there, you know, you can wipe a lot of that stuff off. You know, the one thing I did notice on that. Uh, on my tan folio with that hard chrome on there. I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is about that hard chrome, but you just shoot that thing. And I mean, it just attracts the crap. Um, I mean, even on my other CZs, you know, you can wipe it off and it's really not that black on the front end, but on that tan folio, man, it, it just goops up the front of that damn gun. And I don't know why, but it wipes off, but it uh, it definitely sticks on that thing. Uh, any single action only pistols that come with a decocker? Single action only? Wouldn't that yeah. be the purpose? Yeah. Yeah, I've never. I mean, I've seen them with safeties, but I've never seen a single action with a decocker. You would. You would not. You wouldn't need a decocker. You would yeah. need a safety. Yeah, I've never. I've never seen one. And what? Um, I guess well, like 1911. So those would be single action only. Uh, those would all be safeties. Yeah. I've never seen a 1911 with a with a decocker. I haven't either. That's uh, what I was, that's what I was going with was 1911s. I've never. Uh, I'd you be know, curious, even though. some of the CZs. Right. If there was one out there, I'd 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 be interested to know. That'd be kind of different. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Even on the outside of the slide. Yeah. I. You know. I mean, I, I only lube on the inside of the slides. I don't, you know, I mean, I go on the inside of the slide and the inside of the frame where the slide rides. I don't just smear it all over it, but, you know, I guess people do their gun different ways. Yeah. Right. One thing that you guys were talking about was the slide wear on uh, the handguns. And I was just looking at both the slides on these, the tungsten gray PPQ and the P10. And uh, I, I'll tell you, whatever they are finishing these CZs with, the newer CZs, like the PO7s, PO9s, P10s, freaking unreal, man. The finish yeah. is so damn good on these guns. It's it's crazy. No, yeah, they, look, they look brand ahead, new. This has 500 rounds through it, uh, the P10. It mm -hmm. looks like it just came out of the box. Yeah, yeah mine has 300 rounds, and it, it looks brand new. And this Walther has about, I don't know, probably around the same, maybe a little higher. And you can already see a little, you know, a little smiley face on there, you know? Um, and even on the 320, I have a little bit more on it um, yeah. than this. But this, the friggin' CZs, their finishes are friggin' awesome. Well, uh, on, what about your PCR? Should look uh, at your PCR barrel. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be as good. I mean, those, no. those, those are the older lines of, uh, unless yeah. you get an Omega or something. But I, I was going to say the older ones, man. Like this particular one, this was black, and it was just rubbed off. So I just took the barrel out and just polished it. Oh yeah. Uh, really lightly but I tell you what after shoot a hundred rounds this thing was just shined up right here so I don't yeah. think the older ones were coated very well or they used something different on these PO ones but the other CZs aren't that way now so, Rota Diamond is also saying that the uh, TP9 SA has a decocker with single action only but that kills the trigger that's so it's not a it's not a, deto a decocker it just it stops the trigger from working yeah, yeah, but their new one, their new one is different though. The one that just came out, it still has a decocker, but it changes it to almost like a double action. Double mode. action, yeah, it's a double action. So it's basically the P ninety nine. That's all it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, it's like a single yeah. action, double action. Yeah, it actually, I mean, it looks kind of cool. I don't think I'll do a canic again, but uh, but it looks kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, I have that that uh, SA, but I don't think I'll do another canic. It's just. You know, not nothing against it if anyone has one, but um, I, I don't, I, I don't see a reason for me to ever have one. Yeah, I, I don't, I won't buy another one. Yeah, and I know that uh, Bald and Curious was pretty excited about you know getting your old one. Yeah, man, that's it. I mean, that was a good guy. I, I have to say that the SFX is a nice gun. Um, he, he's going to use it in the optics ops, optics division also, so he's yeah. got a purpose for it. And I, I knew that's why he was going to grab it from you. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm glad he did. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that uh, Strike B is going to be a very nice pistol. I'm excited about 17 getting his and yeah. you know, seeing how he likes it. I actually just got an email the other day. I know, um, who was that? I forget who was asking me. Uh, Red Red and Black Dog yeah. was asking. So apparently what they're saying is um, they, they 
uh, ATF had a, a window of 30 to 90 days, and right now they're in the middle of that window for it to finally go through approval and getting approved by the uh, the um, ATF. And um, and then when they get the guns finally, it's going to take an additional two weeks for them to go through all the orders and send them out. So I, I don't know, probably uh, three to four more weeks, maybe. Um, but then being in New York, it'll be even longer than that. So probably like another month and a half. So. Yeah. Yeah. And C C Max is actually saying that he, he had uh, one of his subs told him mechanic TP nine sells for over $600 in Europe uh, or Turkey, he believes. And I heard the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I heard they were very expensive, expensive over there. Well, I'm sure in Turkey, like the Canic is probably the, uh, the Glock of Turkey or some shit. Right? The elite, yeah, the elite gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, honestly, with the SA, and I mean, I've shot the SF, and I've shot, you know, I shot uh, KS's uh, SFX, and, um, you know, I think really out of all of them before Canic, you know, or I guess I should say before Century Arms started monkeying with all of them, mm -hmm. I mean, I really think the SA has, gosh, it has a phenomenal trigger. Yeah. I mean, it really does. And I think that it is better than the SF very slightly, but I think that it is better than the SF. Now the SFX is, that's a really nice trigger too. Oh yeah. It's crazy. crazy. Yeah, I, I just don't know about, you know, the longevity of it or any of that. So I, I have no idea on that, but if anybody's going to beat it up, it'll be bald and curious. So that'll be good to know yeah. if it's going to last. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at his, uh, when I met him, um, he, he brought his, uh, his strike one, um, Right, I think that's what it's called. Right, strike one. Yeah, yeah. strike one. Yeah, those things are awesome. Yeah, that thing, that thing was pretty dope. Personal strike one. Then the trigger was amazing, uh, but you could tell, man, he shoots the hell out of that thing. So you know, I thought that was cool, you know, and that's why I was happy to sell it to him because I know he's going to use it for what he wants it for. You know, for yeah, me, yeah. it was going to sit in my safe, uh, so I'd rather get rid of something like that for someone who's going to use it. Yeah, and I was going to buy, you know, uh, the Arsenal Strike One um, when it was out, but gosh, it was like. 1200 bucks and then you know when they were going out of business hell i ended up i saw them for like 700 bucks and i, I tried to grab them and you know I, there's one store local that actually had four of them but they would not come down on the price even though they were going out of business uh arsenal was and um they were still asking 13 and 1400 dollars for them the only thing i didn't like about them is the site was built or the rear site was built into the back of the gun yeah, but they yeah. did have two custom offerings where they were actually dovetailed, and those were the ones that I wanted because um, it was just weird that it was at the back. You know, it just I mean, it gave you a really long sight radius, which obviously, you know, was really nice. But yeah, they're sweet guns. Uh, Red and Black's asking what sights did I get on it? Um, I just went with the fiber optics because they're going to be uh, compatible with all, I guess, Glock sights. Uh, at least that's what they're saying. So I just went standard to keep the price down. Um, cause I, I kind of have a little inside connection with some sites. So, um, you know, that, that's what works for me. And then that'll give me more options because, you know, with, with sites, I'm pretty particular on what I want. And, uh, I didn't want to get just basic, you know, Trijicon three dot white sites and then the night sites at night, you know? Yeah. And actually Brian, he said he just bought a Stoger P 300, pick it up on Friday. Does anyone know if they're any good? Yes. They're actually good. They're good shotguns. So, well, Stoger makes good stuff. I mean, I, I really like the, the the Cougars. I mean, it used to be a Beretta gun, but the Stoger yeah. Cougar is a really nice, nice gun. Heavy yeah. as hell, but really nice. Yeah, you'll like the P300. That's I think that if I'm correct, I think that's their entry level or their mid range shotgun, but it's a very nice shotgun. Yeah, 12 gauge. Yep. Yeah, it is a nice shotgun. Um, and then I guess they're asking about, yeah, the trigger and the Metgar mags. That's why I got it. Yeah. And uh, C-Max, I was going to say, Met Metgar mags are amazing mags. You know, what's funny is SIG, you know, when I bought the 320, I did a video way back when everybody was getting the, um, or SIG was switching over to the tech, Techmate mags and going away from the, um, hang on one second. They were going away. They were going away from Metgar and I called SIG and I was like, why are you going away from Metgar? And they said, oh, we've had issues with them. And I was like, I've never heard of an issue. Um, never heard of an issue with Metgar mags. And what I think it was, was the price. You know, they could get the checkmates a lot cheaper. But, uh, and then when I 
bought mags, I got the Checkmate mag, and it was the 15 rounder, and I could only get 14 rounds in it physically, even with the Maglula. And um, so I had to send it back into them, and they found me a Metgar mag. But yeah, I was looking at those Zenith guns. Um, it, it sort of looks like one of those. Uh, what is that? That new SAR that's coming out. That uh, what is it? Uh, I forget what it is. Like uh, DM six or some shit. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think it's made by Taurus, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Is that one we talked about? Uh, yeah, well, similar to that. You know, a lot of those guns are you know basically the same stuff, just with different you know brand names on it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and I guess they're uh, any 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 of you guys ever shot a, a uh, reloads through a Glock 19? Nope. Yeah, um, Rich and Humble and uh, Jay Greg have been uh, answering answering that question. Yeah, because of the barreling. But I think it's if you just really keep it clean, make sure that you know it's not getting trapped up in there. I mean, I know people who shoot reloads in their Glocks. Geez, wicked! Glad you're not hurt too much. That sounds awful. Oh, cool. Darn it! He had a reload. He had a reload blow up in his Glock 17. That's awful. Whoa! Yeah, I know they won't warranty it. I do know. I I knew that. Jeez. Yeah. Well, I guess you know. Bald and curious bought a shockwave, so you can check that out. Did a review. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got um, I've got a deal coming out. I actually bought one. I uh, put my order in, ordered it from Grab a Gun. They said, hey, it's in. Uh, and I've got a video coming out on it. But since we're on the chat, I'll let y'all know about it. So everything was all great and happy. And I was waiting for it to come in. And I started doing some checking. And they're actually still not legal in Texas yet until after September of this year uh, because we have a shotgun law in Texas. Uh, and it was Texas and Ohio. Uh, have the laws that you can't sell them. So I called grab a gun and I said, Hey, I've got my, my order. Here's my order number. And you've already taken my money. And they're like, Oh crap, you're in Texas. Yeah. We can't sell it to you until after September. So they credited my money back. And I was like, why the hell didn't you have on your website saying we can't sell to Texas. I would have never put the order in. And they're like, Oh, it's an error on our part. So that was just last week. Why do we have so, such a bad echo again? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Because I heard it when you were talking, and I heard it when I was talking. It might, I mean, I don't know if it's this weather or not. Y'all still hearing it? Yeah. Nope. I hear it. Um, yeah, Amos is saying uh, he's had three different G19 Gen 4s, had problems speeding reloads, and all of them. Hmm. You know, I have, I've had I've had great luck with grab a gun. Um, well, Sean, they're not they're not legal because we have a law, and our governor signed it. And it, believe it or not, it's actually called the Shockwave Law. <laughs> and so it is it is going to be legal now, but not until after September. So it it has something to do with the length and all this other stuff. Even though it's not listed as a shotgun, it's a firearm. That's why they wouldn't let it pass. God damn it. <laughs> what are you doing? Who, me? No. no, with my, I'm looking at the chat, and if it fades out, I'll hit it back on, and it starts it, so I have to mute it. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, and I've actually heard of the bulges. The Glock bulge uh, causes issues with that. I've heard of that, too, and that's what they're talking about here. Yeah, I guess the gun cannot tell if it's a reload. Um, let's see, it should be golden. Yeah. What else? Anything else? Anybody else have anything coming down the pipe? Uh, waiting on the Hudson. Yeah, yeah. Just waiting on the Strike B. I uh, sent my Steyr in to get seracoded, so uh, hopefully that'll be in in uh, by next week. So we'll see. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm hoping the Hudson comes in this week. I hope, but probably next week. And I have something right here. It's a box. He's got a box. So 
there will be a box and I have a bigger box coming too. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. And what's the news on your Hudson? Any word on it? Uh, it shipped to distributors on the 26th of June. So, uh, they're, they're headed out now. Um, I, I would imagine, um, uh, I was hoping this week, but it'll probably be next week. But, uh, uh, let's see, July 14th is the projected ship date. Uh, Paradox, I think they changed it. Uh, they reported the 26th of June a couple of days ago. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping they stuck to that. Uh, but uh, my luck, it probably did get pushed back. But uh, but we'll see. Uh, I've got a couple of different places around here keeping an eye out for that. So uh, um, Humboldt, I think no, uh, 1100. I think is a little high. I mean, I think it's closer to it's like a thousand five dollars or something like that. Is the MSRP on it? I think. Something like that. Uh, and Rodimo is saying he would pass on Grab a Gun. He shops at Sportsman Outdoor Superstores, Kentucky Gun Company. Uh, Grab a Gun is actually 30 minutes from my house. So I can order it. I don't have to pay any transfer. And I can just drive there and pick it up at, and use them as the FFL. So that's one reason I go through them a lot. Waiting to see one of Paltrow's head on one of those uh, box openings. <laughs> that would be creepy. Yeah, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but. Anything else, fellas? I got nothing. No, no, everything is uh, status quo, man. Any of the subscribers have any questions that we can answer before we get out of here? Any questions at all? I think that's a no. <laughs> oh, or they're typing one of the two. Uh, we could we could probably uh, start the uh, start the wrap up. God dang! Woo. Wow, dude, really? That's uh, yeah. Y'all are probably going to be getting those too. I already got one, but I can't seem to find the link. I, I yeah. tried. I know. I know what you're talking about, right? Yeah, it's the same one. Yeah, I can't. I just asked him to send me a link, but he hasn't been able to. I don't know if he's going to send it to me or not. Um, I guess. Uh, let's see here. The humble marksman. How many magazines do you have? I don't know if he's asking. Total across all pistols. Well, Big Johnson probably has like four hundred fifty thousand. Um. I, I have for every gun that I own, I have four mags, four magazines. So that's a lot. For every gun I have, I have five to six. But then on a lot of the CZ variants, like the 75B, where I can use them, that mag, I probably have 30. And then on the Tanfolio, I have uh, probably about 11. <laughs> you well, know, just in case. Yeah. Well, well if, if I ever get another, if I, get, if I ever get another can folio at this price, I bought the, I bought the humble marksman. Let me. Uh, yeah, that's that's who's texting me. Yeah, you're right. Over, um, yeah. That uh, <laughs> can folio. I got those for an unbelievable price. Humble marksman told me who to reach out to, so I grabbed them up. Yeah. So uh, Rotodyma apparently is not a fan of the P10. <laughs> <laughs> it totally sucks. <laughs> did, did, did you even own one? How can you say it sucks if you don't own one? <laughs> That's awesome. Maybe he wants one really bad. I, I think he's the one who gave me the thumbs down on my uh, uh, Let Freedom Ring video. Probably. Well, it's either him or uh, it's probably Wicked. Uh, all right, gentlemen. Here, all right. One, uh, Jesus is God. Uh, Johnson is the CZ 75 your favorite gun? Uh, no. Um, the 75B, believe it or not, is actually probably my least favorite gun. And it's where, it's just when I put my hand on it, it's where the decocker or the safety is. Um, probably my favorite, of course, is the, I really like the, uh, and I haven't even shot it yet, but uh, the, uh, you know, the orange, uh, Tactical Sport Orange and the Shadow 2. And the Tanfolio are probably my three favorites right now in, in those type of guns. 
Yeah, and here I am getting asked about a P10. Um, and I thought I've said this before, but yeah, Sean, I uh, decided to pass on the P10 personally, but uh, not saying I won't ever get one. I'm just not going to get one now. <laughs> Rhoda Dime is saying most phones have mute. I know, I know, and I usually do mute it. I didn't know that I was going to get 9,000 emails from these two yahoos and somebody else. So, you know, right, uh, really quick. You want to take us out? Yeah, let me take let me take let me start and I'll just kind of tell Rhoda Diamond really well, real quick. I can understand why you don't like the P10. The black one that I had, I was not very high on. Um, but since I got this the FD one, it's really like a night and day gun. And for me personally, I think it's totally worth it. That's all I got. That's big FD. Okay, yes. Uh, as far as the P10, I, I it's, it's it grows on me every day. Um, I very similar experience to 1776. The black one did not impress me very much. It was okay. It was I mean it was a good gun, but uh, but the trigger was not. It was not what we thought it was going to be based on on previous exposure. I guess towards the beginning of the year, um, and uh, the FDE one. And I think maybe it might be a mental thing because I like the look of the FDE one, but the trigger feels better and it keeps getting better and better and better. Uh, so it's. I mean, it 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 is it is a good gun. I won't say any more than that. Yeah, and just the way that I look at it, I mean, I've got the SIG P320, I've got the P10C, or excuse me, the uh, PPQ, you know, I've got other guns, and I've got something else right here. Um, you know, I, I don't, I, not saying I won't ever get one, but I just think there's so many guns out there. But I appreciate everyone being on tonight. Thank you so much for the great questions. Mm. Um, uh, who's it going to be on next week? Is it 17? Uh, yeah. I think it's me. Sure. Okay. So it'll be on 1776 his channel next week. So please all tune in and uh, hit the like and subscribe button for all of us. We appreciate it so much. And, um, we appreciate y'all being on. Yep. And Rob and I will be shaving on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is always a ton of fun. We love seeing everybody out here and see some fresh faces. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. guys. Everybody have a good night. Be safe. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. Carry on, everyone. Later. See you, fellas. Later.